Hello, hello everyone and welcome to this class. This is Financial Institutions. And I hope you guys will learn a lot from this course. In this course, in general, we are going to talk about different forms of financial institutions. What do they do? How do they work? Specifically today, our first class is about direct versus indirect finance. We're also going to talk about financial system, what it is, what does it include, and we'll talk about the main function of the financial system. In addition, we'll also talk about the main features of this financial system, mostly focusing, of course, on financial institutions. An economy of any country is a very vibrant thing. It consists of a lot of different companies, corporations, firms, entrepreneurs, and so on. All of these business people have their business ideas. Some of them want to launch their own business. The existing businesses might have expansion ideas and so on. So a lot of these entrepreneurs, a lot of these businessmen do have their investment opportunities since there are opportunities that they perceive to invest into their own business ideas. Of course, investments, they require funds to invest. Since these businesses are going to acquire funds and later pay them back in the form of interests or dividend, let's call these businesses borrowers. Borrowers acquire funds from lenders, of course. In order to lend money, the lenders must have saved that money in the first place. So in the form of savers and lenders, what we have in this, in this area is the households or other companies which do have savings. Look at Apple, for example. It's known to have very large cash reserves. If Apple as a company wants to, it might provide this cash to other companies and in future be paid back in the form of either interest or dividend. You and I as individuals and a lot of other households can also provide some of our savings to those businesses and also in future receive interest or dividends on the securities that we might buy from those companies. However, if an individual investor wants to buy some shares in a company, say Facebook, he or she, the investor, is not going to call up Mark Zuckerberg and ask him if he is going to sell some of his Facebook shares. Instead, we are going to go through a brokerage company. And here is where financial system comes into play. Financial system basically facilitates all of this exchange of funds between savers, the lenders, and borrowers, those who have investment opportunities. It actually happens even when we don't purposefully provide our capital to the corporations by buying their shares. Even if I just deposit my money in the bank, the bank might use that money to provide loans to entrepreneurs, to firms, to corporations. Or it might buy securities of those corporations. All of that is facilitated by the financial system. So what is it, financial system? Well, simply put, financial system consists of two big parts. One is financial markets, including such markets as stock markets, bond markets and money markets. And another part to the financial system is financial institutions. That is the main topic of this course. There are different forms of financial institutions, including commercial banks, insurance companies, mutual funds, investment banks, and different other types of financial institutions. We'll talk about them as we progress within this course. And now talking about these two parts to the financial system, again, which are financial markets and financial institutions, we come to the distinction between direct finance and indirect finance. Whenever individuals, households, buy shares or bonds of a corporation on the stock market or on the bond market through a broker, through a stock broker, that is called direct finance. 
although a broker has to be involved in this case. As opposed to that, whenever the funds deposited by a household into the bank are used by the bank to provide loans to a company or to buy securities of that company, that is called indirect finance as the household indirectly finances the operations of the company that the bank puts the money into. Now let me repeat that with this illustration. Whenever the investors, the lenders, provide their funds to the corporations by buying their shares or bonds on the stock market or on the bond market, that situation is called direct finance as there is no third intermediary involved between the lenders and the borrowers, although in reality there is a stockbroker. Whenever investors put their money into a bank or they buy different forms of insurance policies or put their money with a mutual fund and then these financial institutions use those funds to buy different securities from corporations that is called indirect finance as there is an intermediary between the investors and the corporation so now guys you know what is a financial system what it consists of and the main function of the financial system is to transfer funds from lenders from savers to those borrowers who have some interesting investment opportunities and those funds can be transferred either directly through different stock and bond markets or indirectly through financial institutions. What you might find surprising is that although we hear a lot about different stock price performance all over the news, stock and bond markets is not actually the primary way that corporations finance their businesses those different financial markets are actually much smaller than the amount of funding provided by financial institutions. So most of the financing is actually done indirectly. And this, I think, emphasizes the importance of studying a little bit about financial institutions. Since in reality they are so important, they provide much more funds to the corporations than all of the stock markets, bond markets and money markets combined, it is important to learn about financial institutions and probably provide yourself with some good job opportunities. Since this industry is so large, there must be a lot of job or business opportunities within this industry. And I'm happy to know that you are taking this class to learn a little bit more about financial institutions. In fact, you have already learned quite a lot about the financial system. We are actually into the features of the financial system. One of them being the fact that financial institutions actually provide much more funding to the businesses with investment opportunities compared to different financial markets. Another feature of the financial system is that it is relatively heavily regulated by the government. One of the reasons for heavy government regulation of the financial system is that there is unfortunately a lot of potential for fraud and misbehavior. That is due to the fact that adverse selection and moral hazard, which are two types of asymmetric information problems, are prevalent in the financial system. And now, continuing to talk about the features of the financial system. One of the things we have already mentioned is most of the funding goes through indirect finance from financial institutions, rather than direct finance through financial markets. Another feature that we want to mention here is that it's mostly only large companies, large corporations that can obtain funds through direct finance from financial markets. And that's, I think, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, 
to get listed on a stock exchange, a company needs to be big enough to satisfy the requirements of that given stock exchange. And even if a small company gets listed on a stock exchange, if nobody has ever heard about that company, the demand for the company's shares is not really going to be large enough to provide substantial funding. So if companies of medium or small sizes want to finance their activities, in most cases they have to do that through indirect finance, through financial institutions, most common by borrowings from a commercial bank. So that, as you see, creates some demand for the services of the financial institutions. These borrowings are accompanied with debt contracts, and these contracts are usually very complex. That is just another feature of the financial system. These complex contracts often involve a lot of requirements on the behavior of the borrowers. They involve a collateral which is an asset that is pledged to be given to the lender in case if the borrower cannot repay the loan. Debt contracts often involve a lot of other features such as restricting the behavior of the borrower especially in terms of protecting the collateral. Another feature of the financial system is that transaction costs in general in the financial system are quite high. And within the financial system, transaction costs are especially high in the financial markets, in direct finance. That gives a chance to financial institutions to improve the efficiency to some extent, reduce these transaction costs a little bit, and in that way make some sort of profits. So financial institutions... They try to reduce transaction costs of direct finance and mostly that is done in two ways. We see a big fat cat here that symbolizes the size. One way of reducing the transaction costs is through the economies of scale. That is a situation when average costs per service or per unit decrease with the size of the company. For example, if a small investor wants to buy a small amount of shares of a company, the transaction costs and the commission fees divided by that small amount of shares will give us a relatively large transaction cost per share. Whereas if a mutual fund is buying thousands and thousands and thousands of shares in one transaction, those transaction costs and commission fees divided by large number of shares give us a small transaction cost per share. Another way in which financial institutions try to reduce transaction costs of the financial markets is by developing some expertise in providing loans, in uh, selecting borrowers. They, of course, try to choose good borrowers. And since financial institutions specialize in this activity, they might develop some expertise that might help them to reduce these transaction costs. Imagine a small investor who wants to invest small amount of money directly into some company. It would be a little bit more difficult for that investor to assess which of the companies might be a good borrower as opposed to a borrower who will not be able to repay in future. 